Okay, so you can look at uh, strain canvas strain, or another name is positional release, to look at the psoas major. So obviously it attaches from the lumbar spine, it comes down with the iliacus and goes to the lesser trochanter. In terms of locating the psoas muscle, there's a few ways. Yeah? One way um, is a Leon Chato. He talks about a couple of inches across and a couple of inches down. Yeah? So two inches across, two inches down, and then you're coming in to find the psoas that way. Whereas uh, James Earls, yeah, when he was showing me, he finds the ASIS, and if you roll your fingertips directly over the ASIS, you're going to come onto the iliacus. And then from the iliacus, you can sort of like glide medially, and then you're going to come onto part of the fibers of the psoas. I remember, you know, with Meyer's philosophy of the psoas, you know, we're looking at different fibers, you know, that sort of thing. If you've got an anterior tilt, the lower fibers are held short. If you've got a posterior tilt and you've got a flat back, the upper fibers could be short. If you have a rotation, yeah, different fibers could be short as an example. Anterior rotation on the right, the anterior lower fibers could be holding you anterior. However, posterior left could be the upper lateral fibers holding you posterior. So when you, like people like the lawyers and James Earls would treat the psoas, but they would treat different fibers of different aspects of the psoas. So just bear that in mind as well. So the way I like to find, you have to be careful on the right side when you're palpating through the abdominal because you've got um, uh, the ileocecal valve yeah, and then you've always got the appendix and between the ASIS and the umbilicus as you drift into a third of a way then there's a little point called the McBurney point so if you were to come in and press down and he has a, an early onset of appendicitis you couldn't actually get pain in there yes yeah, so it's nothing to do with the psoas it's because you are irritating the appendix and you contact the appendix and then you will perceive the pain. So, so bear that in mind. And obviously you've got the organs here yeah, and things like that. So be careful when you are pressing through that. So the technique I'm going to show you, the strain, counter strain. So find the ASIS and literally just slowly make your way through the abdominal wall. Yeah, so I'm going to come through the abdominal wall. And I'm going to slowly make my way through. When I feel I want something, I'm going to ask my patient to slowly lift that right leg. So lift your right leg. Okay, there's your psoas there, alright? Yeah, okay, I'm just going to bring my fingers slightly more medial to that and come through and slowly lift your leg. Okay, alright, a little uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it was in contracture, then it would probably be quite tender. And what I would normally say to my patient is, as I press, he might say on a 1 to 10, he says it's a 6 or 7, and I tend to tell them, let's go with a 10. So we say it's a 10 when I press it. And then as I keep my pressure on, I will then try and find the position of ease. Um, so I'm going to come through, lift your leg, okay? So we're going to say that's a 10, all right? And as I lift your leg, then if I take the weight of your leg, let me take the weight of it, now it should start to ease off. So from a 10, you might already say to me it's a 7, yeah? So as I bring the leg in into further flexion, you might say it's a 6, you might actually say it's an 8, yeah? So if I just keep going, yeah, because it's still in contraction there, all right? Mm -hmm. It's a little tender? Yeah. yeah? So what I'm going to try and do now is, if I go into adduction, it might make it worse, it might make it better, it normally makes it better. It's still in contraction there, I can feel it. So I'm going to cradle his leg, and I'm going to add in a little bit of extra rotation there, and that was easier. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And what number would you say? Four. Okay, so now if I, I want to get down to about a two, okay, so I'm going to go down. Tell me when it starts to drift down again. Yeah, about that. Okay, so once I feel, so now it's less, two le or less? Two. Okay. <coughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is just hold him. And any ideas how long I'd hold it for? My fingers on the palpation of the psoas, I would intimate, rather than keeping the pressure on, I keep pressure on, I, I ease off a little bit, and then in every 10, 15 seconds, I apply pressure to feel that the psoas is in a state of relaxation. And the idea of this technique would be that you're trying to reset the length of the muscle spindle. And ideally, you'd physically look at a watch or the clock, yeah? And then you'd hold for between 60 and 90 seconds, 90 being the optimum. Okay, so I'm just going to change the angle because I can still feel it's firing up a little bit on you. Okay? There's a lot. Yeah? Okay, that's probably about a minute. So uh, I'm just going to do a few more seconds. Okay, so we've got a maximal flexion, trying to maximally relax this tissue. Once you feel you've held for the appropriate time, sometimes you can feel a pulsation in the tissue. And relax.
back. So the, the most important aspect of this is from there, don't do anything. It's really hard sometimes for the patient not to get involved, don't do anything. So I am physically palpating the psoas and I am slowly lowering the leg down. That's perfect. Okay, to the neutral position. Like so, perfect, good. So he did not contract. Okay, so I lowered his leg down. Yeah, and then potentially, if he had back pain, we would get him to stand up. And ideally, um, like Leon Chain talks about, 70% reduction in pain or 70% um, improvement of range of motion. Yeah, so you're looking at one of two things here. You know, if he says if he's not easy, the worst thing David could do now is to sit up, is to bolt up. Yeah, so then we would again to roll to the side. Yeah, and then. <coughs> If he comes in stooped, I would expect him to then be able to stand up. Yeah, I probably would try to lengthen the leg from here. Yeah, because if he comes in with the knees bent, um, I would try to lengthen the leg. Yeah, then we'd roll to the side and then we'd ask him to, to then stand up. You all right? Mm -hmm.